Welcome to Basic Brewing Video. I'm James Spencer. I'm Steve Wilkes. Today we are going to follow on down my path of making <laughs> interesting low gravity beers with rye, malted rye. Uh, and this is perhaps one of my, mo if, if not the most ambitious brewing project that I've taken on because it's so complicated. But, really? but when you have the right tools, it makes things easy. You're becoming a bit of a rye savant. <laughs> I just want to throw that out there. I, I've been trying to think of uh, interesting uh, like beer names or whatever uh, with rye, but uh, I don't know. I've come up dry on the rye. <laughs> <laughs> so this is a, my, my goal was to make a low gravity, yeah. tart, hoppy as in not bitter, but hop flavor and aroma beer that is a great session beer for summertime because it's hot outside. It is hot. Okay, so buckle your seatbelt. All right. Here's how this one went. I started out with five pounds or 2.27 uh, kilograms of malted rye, nothing else. And I added that to six gallons or 22.7 liters of water. And I did a mash rest with that at 150 degrees Fahrenheit or 65 C for 60 minutes. And I did it in the uh, high gravity electric brewing system, brew in a bag. So at the end of that, I took out the grain and I raised that wort to 180 degrees Fahrenheit or 82 C for 15 minutes. And that was to pasteurize the, uh, the wort. Then I chilled it to 120 degrees Fahrenheit or 49C and racked it to a sanitized carboy, adding at that point White Labs WLP 677 Lactobacillus delbruckii. Uh, then I cleaned out the, uh, the high gravity system. I put the carboy with the wort in it in the system added water around it, so I had a water bath in there around it, and I set the system for 120 degrees Fahrenheit or 49C and left that for five days. After that reached a level of tartness that I was fairly happy with, I poured the, uh, cleaned the kettle again, poured the wort into the kettle, brought it up to 180 degrees Fahrenheit, and I added three ounces or 85 grams of Simcoe pellets uh, into a little uh, cylinder, a little mesh cylinder, and I steeped that for 15 minutes at 180 degrees Fahrenheit. So again, I am pasteurizing the wort and I'm hopefully adding some uh, hoppy flavor and aroma there. <laughs> After that, I cooled and pitched with uh, Safel US05. Eight days later, uh, I kegged it and I used the uh, brulosophy uh, technique of fining. I used a half a teaspoon of gelatin in a half a quarter cup of water. I raised that to 150 degrees Fahrenheit in the microwave, stirred that in, poured that into the keg, uh, and then racked the wort or the beer on top of it at that point. Now that's been uh, it fermented for eight days mm -hmm. and I kegged it. 11 days ago. So the original gravity of this beer was 1022. The final gravity, uh, didn't write it down, but the, <laughs> take my word for it, the uh, ABV, 1.6% uh, hmm. alcohol. So the lowest gravity beer I've ever made. I'm kind of nervous about this to see what you think about it, but well, uh, do you want to pour? Sure. Now, uh, I didn't boil. I pasteurized the wort twice, mm -hmm. once before adding the lactobacillus and once, uh, you know, uh, and adding the hops. And this is a keg fill, so uh, I'm nervous about the carbonation as well. So since I didn't boil, this stuff is really cloudy. And I think that that is uh, because I didn't, have a protein break. Mm -hmm. You know, with the boil, one of the reasons that you boil is to 
uh, have coagulate the proteins and then they settle out and you clarify the beer. So even with fining, this is still cloudy. That's not yeast. I think that's protein and yeah. I don't think that's going to go away. Yeah, so probably not. Cheers. Cheers. Smells good. That's good. That's really good. I think it's, it's refreshing. Kind of a, it's kind of a Berliner Berliner rye. <laughs> Berliner rice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm really happy with it. I it's not to be honest, it's not as tart or as hop hoppy flavory uh, that I that I wanted or I expected. And I can I think I can explain it in a couple of ways. Uh, I looked on the um, Milk the Funk forum uh, on the internet, or the wiki on the internet, and they said that the Lactobacillus uh, delbarkii, or this uh, White Labs 677, is not the best for kettle souring. Oh. Because I guess it's, it doesn't, uh, doesn't act as quickly. So it's maybe good for putting like in a barrel or something over long-term souring. Mm -hmm. But on the short term of a kettle souring, it doesn't act as aggressively as other things like probiotics that yeah. have Lactobacillus in it or maybe doing what I've done in the past and just using malted grain. Yeah, just put some grain on it. Uh, and also on the, on the hoppiness, that cylinder, I wish I'd used a hop bag instead of that cylinder uh, because I, I was having trouble getting the wort to go through that cylinder. Oh, okay. Uh, the, the hops swelled up uh -huh. in there and they pretty much just filled that cylinder. Now I have used that cylinder on, on a standard, like a one ounce, uh, hopping on a 60 minute boil. That's what I was going to say. And it worked just fine. Yeah. So if you're boiling, you have the circulation right. created by the right. boil. And the smaller amount in there, yeah. it had plenty of, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. uh, plenty of opportunity to, to bitter the, the wort. So with those two caveats, I'm happy. I'm happy with the way it turned out. It's very nice. It's, it's absolutely clean. So your brewing technique was good. I mean, there's nothing, there's no off flavors in it at all. The rye character is actually very light. It doesn't taste like a, you know, rye devil beer. It, 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 um, I don't miss the malt. You know, I don't miss two row. How's the body? The body is great. There is a little bit of a, I get a little bit of a, hang on. There's just a little bit of a, Bitter isn't, it's not bitter. There's a little bit of a flavor node well, it's at the tart. very end. Well, it's not, it's not it's tart. It's tart? It, yeah, it is tart, but, but this is different and I can't, I don't even have a word for it. <laughs> this is the most, this is, uh, this is a unique animal. Nobody's it ever brewed unique, this before. It is very unique and it's not a bad thing I'm trying to describe. I just truly don't have a word for it. It's like, you taste it, it's a little bit lemony. And I think that's the tartness. You know, it's, it's, so it's reminiscent of Almost like lemonade, but it's not lemon. I think tangerine. Tangerine. <laughs> da, 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 da. And the, I think tangerine on the nose and a bit in the flavor. Mm -hmm. And the, the tartness brings kind of the pith of the... <laughs> there's pith in there. <laughs> Maybe it's the pith. It's, it's like the pith of the, of the tangerine. It's not, a, it's not grapefruit in this instance, I don't think, which is what you'd usually expect for... Uh, uh, yeah, for these American hops, I think it's more like a tangerine kind of a thing. It's kind I of more the more right. of a gentle kind of a of a citrus flavor than that. You know, grapefruit is like ooh puckery, right? But this is like, hmm, that's nice and citrusy. I think you're right, and it is. And now that you've put that thought in my head, it does remind me a little bit of when you. I don't know how you peel a tangerine, but <laughs> you just put the whole thing in your mouth. Well, you kind of, sometimes you have to start them, you know. It's like I can't get it started. You're like an orange, or so like that. And when you do that, you get that little blast, but you yeah. also get that little bit of pith. <laughs> no one likes pith in their no mouth. No one likes pith, but there is that little bit of that, the, like that little bitter thing that happens, mm -hmm. in, and I, I, I get all of that. Yeah, and that's the best description I can make of it. Yeah. So now, now that the, you know the hops were not boiled. Right. They were um, they were kept at that 180 degrees Fahrenheit uh, for 15 minutes, mm -hmm. which uh, I got to give Mike. Mm. We we attended a session. That's really good. We attended a session at the uh, homebrewers or homebrew con, 
with Mike Tonsmeyer talking about ta uh, tart, hoppy beers or mm -hmm. sour hoppy beers, and that's what part of the inspiration for this. <clears throat> well, and the other thing about this too is it's very East Coast. Yes, exactly. It's, it's very, very cloudy. East, it's very cloudy. cloudy. All the hop characters up front. Mm -hmm. It's not about bittering. It's right. about the juiciness of the hops. It's, it's a very juicy beer. Right. Yes, it's a very East Coast. Yeah, New England. Berliner Rye. New England sour pale ale thingy. Well, I like it a lot. I'm, I plan to drink the rest of this bottle. <laughs> uh, I, I really, I do. It's a, it's a, it's a great beer. And how, was it hard to make? I mean, in other words, did you have any trouble with the rye and the stickiness? Because no, it's brewing the bag. Because brewing the bag, you don't have that problem. And with the, uh, I gotta brag again on the high gravity system. Mm -hmm. With that system, it was super easy to dial in the temperatures, like right. like you just dial in 180 degrees, it brings it up to that, and you don't have to worry about it. And then you got to set it, you know, I had to set the water back. I left the colander thing in there so that the, the carboy, you know, didn't have to sit inside or on right. top of the heating element. Right. Uh, but then it just sat there, and we didn't have to think about it, except for when we had to dry clothes. And because yeah. mine is the higher yeah. voltage thing, we had to unplug the system to plug the <laughs> clothes dryer in. But it's like, like an, acres. in just an hour or two of drying the clothes and unplugging the high gravity system, it maintained that temperature. Oh, so and, mm -hmm. and it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if the, you know you're. It's not critical it's like that a, you stay exactly at that right. temperature. So um, so post mortem, what would you do differently? Mm. If you're gonna do this, I would like to try it again. And I would either like to do more research on with the Milk the Funk people uh, and figure out which uh, probiotic to use, because that's something I haven't used before, because I buy this probiotic at the store that's like Lactobacillus GG or something like that. Yeah. So, I mean, there's like live bugs in these pills, you know, that I take every day. I don't know if it's, I don't know if they work or not, but... <laughs> But apparently you can make a starter from, you know, from yeah. uh, stuff that you buy at the store. Or, you know, maybe some, some of the, uh, the cultures that you use yogurt or something like that to get a more aggressive sourness over a shorter period of time. Right. Uh, so, um, you know, like I said, they, you know, they say for kettle souring, this is, is probably not the stuff that you want to use because it has a more gentle sourness over mm -hmm. that short period of time. Maybe great if you push the, put this in like a, a, a carboy or a or a barrel over a long period of time if you want to do a souring. That right, way. right. Um, and then also use a hot bag that mm -hmm. I can actually take a pair of tongs and squeeze the bag and make sure that the wort is circulating or you know that the ju juicy hoppiness is is getting out of those hops. Mm -hmm. Those two things are. are or what I would change. Also, I probably need a pH meter if I'm gonna be playing a lot with sou this kettle souring stuff mm -hmm. um, because you don't want it to go so sour that the yeast can't work. Right. Because you gotta, you gotta put the yeast in afterwards. Right. Well, it's delicious. Um, this is not a criticism of the beer. Here's, what, here's some things that I think would be nice. Mm -hmm. I think it would be nice if it had like the um, uh, lime leaves, is it kefir? A kefir? Yeah, kefir lime leaves added to this would be a Ooh. really nice flavor addition, I think. just, to, I think it would just complement the beer really nicely. Um, and then perhaps just a tad more body, which maybe makes it a 2% beer. Mm. So I'm not saying add two row, right. but maybe, maybe just another a half tiny a bit. And yeah, I mean, I'm not talking about a lot. Right. Just a little bit, I, I want just a little more body. And the and the lime thing or any other flavoring thing was just like well what would go with this and that's all right. it's not a, not a, it would be better or worse it would just be different but I, uh, I this is a great idea I thought about fixing this beer by like getting some lactic acid mm -hmm. serve yourself some more please well I uh, <laughs> it's only uh, seventy four calories per twelve ounce uh, serving uh, I th I thought about. You, you know, you could dose it with some lactic acid to boost yeah. the bitter, the, the tartness. <coughs> you, you could also dry hop to uh, bring out more hop character. But I didn't want to do that because I wanted to taste the, the product as it is now. Yeah, and I like, I, in my mind, I, I'm not tasting this as a beer that's 
hoppy. Mm -hmm. um, but then again, you, when you're bringing them out in the front end, like those people in the East Coast do. <laughs> those people. Those people. <laughs> I don't know. You know, it's like we had that, we had some beers at Mike Tonsmeyer's house. One of them, I can't remember the name of it, so forgive me, Michael, but it was just so juicy. I mean, right. it was just like a, right. somebody's just stuffed a half a pound of juicy fruit gum in your mouth, and it's just like, and it was great. And I think that that's on the next episode, the next audio episode. That's probably what I'm going to do. And, and we taste that beer, and he talks about how to brew it. So, so look on this it. one has that possibility going. Right, right. So it's, hops it's in there. That vein. It's, it's there. It, it, it's just not as aggressive. It, this is more kind of like a shandy. You know, those kind mm -hmm. of shandy beers. It's mm -hmm. like a lemonadey kind of beery character, yep. but with a tangerine. If you were to take, if you were to make lemonade. Tanger, tangera, tangerine aid right. <laughs> instead right. of lemonade. Uh, I think that this is, would be what it's, um, what it's about. This is a great, a great hot summertime. It's 102 degrees here. Well, it's not 102 degrees right now, but yesterday, mm. 102 degrees. Yeah. Lincoln, Nebraska, 106. Jeez. You've got to brew this beer. <laughs> because Wake up, Lincoln. Wake up, Lincoln. <laughs> Go it's, on our you. it's our new TV show. <laughs> Wake up, Lincoln. We're call it Wake up, Lincoln. <laughs> Good morning. <laughs> Good. Hello, Lincoln. <laughs> All right. All right. Well, uh, if there are any details, uh, write me a note, James at basicbrewing.com, or or we put this out on YouTube and our podcast feed, so you can you can comment on on that. But uh, I like it. I, I like it too. And I don't care that it's cloudy. No, I don't care about cloudy. It doesn't bother me at all. That. All right, all right. Happy brewing, everybody. Cheers. Cheers. Come and visit us on the web. At basicbrewing.com, you can find archive lists of both our audio and video podcasts on home brewing. You can also find our DVDs, extract brewing and partial mashing, stepping into all grain, low-tech lagering and decoction mashing, introduction to wine kits, and our Basic Brewing Brewer's Logbook, where you can track and log up to 50 batches of beer. Drop us a line. We'd love to hear from you. Write to James at basicbrewing.com, Steve at basicbrewing.com, or just use the contact form on basicbrewing.com. Good beer. Thank you, Joe. Cobweb or something on my face. What am I, like Grandpa? <laughs> I mean, for the Munsters?